Code for America is not just the creation of a bunch of apps. It's connecting our citizens with our city. It's about inserting a, a model of working, thinking, innovating uh, into a culture that's bound by a lot of rules. I mean, it's kind of a culture virus for innovation in government. It is something that really cities need a lot, which is to bring in talented individuals that can come in and think about how technology and civil service can kind of cross. The fellows don't know that what they're doing is impossible, so they continue to deliver. When you bring in somebody or a group of fellows from Code for America, I would actually put them on the hardest problem you got. We were specifically asked from the beginning to work around the issue of blight. Blight sucks in, in many ways. It's a huge quality of life issue. Blight is just one of those things where if you can take down that house next door to Miss Rita or take down this house next door to Miss Jackson, they're going to love you to death for it. They already were really mobilized and they understood the process so we kind of like waded through different data sets in City Hall and tried to kind of bring together all the information that would tell a clear story about what's happening with that property or that property. We absolutely benefited from the, their talents and being able to you know, solve an intractable problem for us. The projects that they developed are transforming thousands of Detroiters' lives right now. And so this has been one of the most incredible experiences in my professional career. You absolutely have to take that step because if you, know, if you don't take that step, then you're going to be the same place you are right now. So because of uh, logistical complications, uh, Catherine cannot join us today, but we are joining her on Google Hangout in video conference. Hello, Catherine. Hello. And you're talking to us from Oakland, California. Yes. That's uh, by, pretty... the, by the power of technology and the magic of Google Hangouts, uh, I am in my living room. I may or may not still be in my pajamas since it's 7 o'clock in the morning here, but um, <laughs> we just won't move the camera angle. No. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, now, you used to, we won't show all the, 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 the toast and orange juice, but the, you used to uh, head tech for Obama. You worked on the Obama campaign. How did, that, how did you translate that into what you're doing now? Um, well, I really think of the work we're doing at Code for America as an extension of um, the work I did on the campaign. And, you know, electoral politics is really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to democracy. Um, and it's really, if you think about it, a very uh, minuscule way that citizens get involved in their communities. It happens every few years. Um, and there are, you know, very limited ways that citizens actually do work on campaigns. So or, in other words, um, these, these, these people who are, who are active during the campaign, you wanted to continue using that energy on a local level. We wanted to change the way that people think about getting involved with government, that it doesn't just mean voting or volunteering on a campaign. It means really every day how you interact with your city and what government actually means in your day-to-day -day lives. Um, and we think that government really is not just a building where you go to get paperwork done. It's, it's everything we do together where we live. Now, I saw some examples. I mean, you, you know, mayor of Chicago, uh, some other places, but also like Macon, Georgia, and some other places, mm -hmm. small towns. Um, how did you translate that now as international program director into Code for All, which is what you're heading now? Yeah, well, we, this is a very new program, um, and a lot of the work that we're doing is trying to figure out what values we have built Code for America on can be translated internationally. Um, and we think a lot of what we do is universal, um, but there are obviously very specific um, political um, uh, contexts here in the States that um, don't necessarily translate. So the work that I'm doing is really getting to know people on the ground who understand the place where they live and can run programs that are specific to a certain locale. And I'm sure that it's not always one size fits all. I think you have to tailor it. How do you, how do, you do that? Uh, through experimentation and in true Silicon Valley startup fashion, we're getting right to work and figuring out what works and what doesn't and, and iterating along the way. So we've got three pilots right now, uh, one in Mexico City, 
one in the Caribbean and one in Germany. Um, and they're all, so Mexico City is at the city level, the Caribbean is at the regional level, and, and Germany is at the country level. And they all have very specific um, and diverse needs, and we're tailoring programs um, in each of those uh, locales so, so to the you, local context. So can you give us one example, one or two examples of, of how you found best data-driven solutions? Um, so in, in internationally or at Code for America? Uh, well, if you found it already internationally, great. But if, if not, then let's yeah. talk Code for America. Well, we haven't actually started uh, any projects um, yet internationally. We're still setting up the programs. But um, here in the States, we had a project called um, uh, Honolulu Answers, which was our fellows in Honolulu. Um, last year built, were asked to rebuild the city's website. And uh, that was a task that was going to be too hard for them to pull off in the, the nine months that they had to work on a project. So instead, they decided to build a site that would answer the questions that people um, were, were looking for when they came to the city's website. And it's actually data the city had but hadn't been using. Um, and so they took that data and really just created a site that got at the top, you know, 95% of the, of the issues that, um, that people were looking for. And that's an example of actually thinking about um, helping government think about the data they have in a way that can be most uh, useful to its citizens. And what about the, the I was curious to, to know what role you played in the fight the blight effort that we saw uh, on the video. Yeah. So blight, for those who don't know, is, uh, is basically dilapidated uh, properties that um, no one lives in, are abandoned, and are basically an eyesore in the neighborhood. Um, that was a project that came out of New Orleans, and uh, which has had blight for a long time, but especially in the wake of Katrina, um, had a rise in blighted properties. And the mayor there had made a promise to the city to get rid of 10,000 blighted properties in his first term. And the technology that was available to help understand the, the scope of the problem was really not great. So our team built um, a tool called Blight Status, which is a super simple um, search interface where you can plug in an address and see exactly the real time uh, situation that's happening at that address. And it was so popular in New Orleans that that company is now, um, uh, that project has turned into a company and they're a startup in our incubator and are selling to other cities in the US. So that's a big success story for us. And, and as in, uh... As in the states that we see such a, a contrast of, 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 of rich and poor, uh, there, there is that also here in Europe. So I'm sure there is that uh, a lot of opportunity for you to get involved here. And we hope to see you here one of these days. Thank you very much, Catherine. Let's give her Thanks a hand. Thanks a lot. Thank you.